found that we had an abundance of gas in the gas field in Indonesia and the power station wasn't going to take so much, we decided that we would develop the LNG plant that would, first of all, be available for export if necessary, but we also wanted to develop the domestic market. Choosing the all-electric drive from Siemens was a very, very good choice and turned out to be economically and give us a lot of savings from the point of view of efficiencies and the amount of energy that will be needed to drive that for the future. And we saw this as a fantastic opportunity. We've always tried to work with Siemens because of their reliability and their equipment, particularly in some of these difficult areas that we work. But also, digitalization is being used in the plants to send back all the information to center control where people can monitor the operation, the maintenance, and do preventive maintenance. In Indonesia, there are 60 million people without electricity today. You can see from the per capita consumption of electricity in Indonesia, it's still only around 500 kilowatt hours per person per year. And in the USA, you're around 13,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. And to be able to use gas turbines combined with clean LNG, we certainly believe is the future for Asia to get them through the next 20 to 30 years. The cargo is LNG which arrives here by carriers, which we take over, we store here locally on the FSRU, and then we do the regasification towards the high-pressure gas grid ashore here in Italy. During the cargo transfer, a lot of boil of gas is created. That boil of gas expresses itself in tank pressure, which we need to reduce. Since we definitely don't like to lose any energy with the boil of gas compressor, we are injecting it in the liquid stream and sending it ashore, reducing the environmental impact of the terminal. Oil and gas will remain the backbone of the global energy supply. In particular, natural gas will become even more important in the next decades.